Many of you have seen this composite behind me from 2017, and a few of you have seen this clock. And today I'll show you a super duper easy way you can create a similar total solar eclipse composite like this in Photoshop. We'll do an easy version of this and make a horizontal composite like this, but this will give you an idea of how you can do this in any shape and form. And although I'm using a total solar eclipse here as an example, this will work perfectly fine if you want to use just your partial phase eclipse photography. All the pictures I'm using are straight out of the camera with zero processing done. And if you watched my last video on how to create an HDR total solar eclipse image, feel free to use that as a centerpiece. So let's get started. All right, so I have seven images here, and as you can see that they are not really aligned, but for the purposes of this video, we don't need them to be aligned. So if you take a look at some of these, they're also not evenly spaced out. So this is after first contact, and then this is right before second contact. This is totality, right after third contact. And then this is right before fourth contact. Okay, so we're going to process these and put them into one file in Photoshop. So let's open Photoshop. I'm going to go open file, scripts, load files into stack, browse. So I'm going to select all of these, press OK. Do not attempt to align source images because we're not stacking these, so it doesn't really matter. And depending on how many you're doing, it could take a little while. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see all seven layers here imported one by one. And luckily for me, they are in order. My base image is going to be my totality image here. So I'm going to move this off to the center at some point. But for now, what I want to do is I want to select just the bottom row here, the bottom layer here, and I want to extract the sun out of this picture so that I have just the sun. And the best way to do this, or the easiest way to do this, is if you click on Select, Color Range, and then in this window, by default, this sets to sampled colors, but I'm going to set it to shadows. And you can see here that it, it kind of already selected everything but the sun. So white is selected and black is not selected. You don't even have to like mess with the fuzziness here. Just leave it wherever since we're just doing shadows. And then now I'll click OK. You can see that everything, it looks like the sun is selected, but it's actually inverted. If I zoom out, you can see the selection. If I, hold on, Right, you can see the selection is everything but the sun. And the way to just extract it is if we just click delete, boom, we have just the sun. And now we can do whatever we want with it. Great. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. If you have something like this, you can deselect by doing control D, or you just select and then deselect. And we're gonna do the same thing on this layer. So select color range, shadows, okay. Yeah. I don't even have to do any kind of feathering or expansion. It does really well at just selecting the sun and then I'll click delete. And now we have just the sun. Great. Zoom back out. So the next one, control D, get out of here. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing here. And this is a little bit fuzzier and I think it'll still do pretty well. You can see it does pretty well, press okay. There you go. If, it's, if it expands out a little bit, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you want to make sure that that layer is selected, not like the other one like I had. Press up, delete. Great. I'm going to go to the next one. Well, the next one is totality. We'll leave that one alone. Go to the other one. I'll hide this one. Control D to deselect. And then we're going to, I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Select, color range, shadows, okay. There you go. Just check that, yep, only the sun is selected does really well and delete great one more time or two more times control d select color range okay delete so control d oops select color range that delete great okay now we have our image here so control d so now I want to move this to the center. All right, before we do anything with this, what I want to do is I want to create a new fill layer and create one that's solid black. All right, uh, here we have this, and let this be black. And I'm going to put that all the way at the bottom. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to create some guides here to help us place these layers more easily. So go to view, guides, new guide layout this is from a previous project and i have seven rows here or seven layers here 
So you can do seven and we have seven boxes that get created. And if you wanna make sure you don't touch the edges, you can create, click on margin and create some margins. The top and bottom margins, I don't really care about, but left, let's say I'll do 50 and then right I'll do 50. So there's some buffer there and click okay. And now we're going to place our pictures into these boxes here. So I'm gonna click on and make the totality image visible. And I'm going to click and drag this all the way to the bottom because every other layer will blend into this one. So I'll zoom in a little bit and then I'll move this to the center here. I think this is the center. Yep, this looks like the center. And I'm placing this sitting on top of the marker here, this margin here, because it's just a little bit easier to see them to try and make the margin, the center here, if that, if that makes sense. So now we're going to, I'm gonna select these two and we'll work on these one by one. So this is selected, so this is going to go here and the easiest way to do this is to just place this against the margins on the left and the bottom. You can see that, there we go. And then this one needs a little bit of a rotation because I had field rotation as I was doing, as I was using a manual alt as tripod. There we go, easy. And we'll do the next two. So I'll select this one, I'll move this one out of the way. And then again, this one needs a little bit of rotation because of field rotation. And then same thing, I'll zoom in, there we go. Same thing with this one. All right, and finally, the last two. So I'll take this one, put this here. Okay, and this one I'll put here. But now I think we're done. So we can do view. Instead of getting rid of the guys, we can do um, let's say show guys. We can hide the guys, and this is what it looks like. Now we can crop this to make it a fit a little bit better. And before you cropped it, you could have taken all of these images, all of these layers. Um, combine them and then you can rotate the whole thing so that it's diagonal, but this is pretty simple, right? Uh, I hope this was helpful in showing you how to get the sun out of the layers and then stack them here. And I only use seven layers here. You can use as many as you want. You can make any shape as you want, as you see my circular, circular clock shaped. If you use Gordon Telepin's app to time out when to take these exposures, they'll look a lot more even than mine because you can see that they're not, exactly evenly spaced, especially the last two here. All right, this is pretty good. And the last trick that I'll show you is if I zoom in here, I don't know if it translates that well on video, but the background of the eclipse and the background of my color fill layer is different. So the best way to fix this is to just you know, double click on your, on your color fill layer. And once you get the color picker, just select you know the, the end of the top layer here and you'll see that it kind of moves into the bluer and it should blend in a lot better now. So if I press okay, there you go. It looks a lot smoother on my monitor. Hopefully it translates onto the video, but if it doesn't and you see like a hard uh, cutoff here between the colors, just, just blend it in. So there we go, works pretty well. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. If I get a chance to photograph this coming eclipse, I plan to redo this video with brand new data. And if you want to get your hands on a limited edition Nastronomy Total Solar Eclipse t-shirt, check out the link below or head on over to nastronomy.com slash shop. I appeared on Good Morning America wearing this design and more on that soon. Good luck to everyone in the eclipse. I wish you all cheers.